Coldy and Fast Estates go together like an ice cold beer on a hot summer's day. Ever since Audi launched the RS2 back in the early 90s, which of course borrowed parts from Porsche, it's pretty much dominated this area without really too much competition. Now, of course you had BMW producing the M5 Touring with the V10. And of course, we've got Mercedes with the C63 and the E63 AMGs across the years too. But it's the RS4 and the RS6, which have been the cars to beat in that fast estate sector. And then we've got the M3 Touring. Now, that launched in 2022, and that is a fantastic car. And to be truthful, put this RS4 to shame. Now, we know that this B9 generation is likely going to be the last RS4 and we've got it here in competition spec to see whether these little changes that Audi has made have turned it into something that can truly compete with the M3 Touring. Call it the last dance, if you will. What do you get in this competition spec then? What Audi has done is instead of giving it more power in its 2.9 litre twin turbo V6 engine, which still produces that 444 brake horsepower and around 400-ish pound-feet of torque too. Instead, they focused on the chassis. They've let their hair down a bit and they've decided, you know what? Our Audis used to have a bit of character about them, so whatever happened to them? Because the RS4, the regular car, doesn't feel like this one. Believe me, this is twitchy, this is agile, this is fun, this is edge of the seat stuff which is interesting to say, considering it's still obviously a Quattro, which we know have been shamed for their understeer over the years. But Audi has turned over a new leaf, and I noticed it first in the latest RS3 generation, where you get a bit more, a bit more fun, you get more power sent to the rear, and that one even has a bit of a drift mode as a party piece. But this one sticks with the tried and tested Quattro, and we don't actually get any more rear bias, but we do get some recalibrated differential settings which allow for more slip which means you can go slightly sideways without it wanting to stop everything so let's talk about that chassis then other changes include and this is where the biggest change comes in and makes the biggest impact with the rs4 is that they've ditched the adaptive suspension system that i thought was brilliant and worked really well as a, a regular road carb however underneath this we have manually adjustable coilovers for the first time so with those manually adjustable coilovers, you can drop the ride height by as much as 20 mil if you'd like. Now, I don't know the exact settings that are on this Audi press car at the moment, but I believe it's dropped around 10 mil over the regular car. Now, that in itself just helps the car look a bit meaner, but the coilovers in mid corner and corner entry help that front end just to bite a little bit sharper into the corner and suddenly this 1.7 ton behemoth of an estate suddenly becomes an agile little sports car and with the four-wheel drive quattro system you get a ridiculous amount of grip everywhere even on a cold december's day what else do we get new on the competition well we get these 20 inch wheels which i think are beautiful they're only for the competition cars now, wrapped around those is a Pirelli P0 Corsa tyre, which is an ultra high performance summer tyre. And as I negotiate some of these greasy roads in December, I'm starting to think how brilliant they would be on a hot summer's day where there's plenty of grip. And then when you get to the corners and you stomp on those brakes, my word, you wouldn't think you've got 1.7 ton beneath you. You come to a, a stop very quickly and you seem to be able to push on them time and time again without fade. I'm just going to dial everything back down to auto now and we can have a little sensible conversation. Now, price point, this is £85,000 which makes it about £14,000 more than a regular RS4. And as I say, for the money you get the 20 inch wheels, the Pirelli P0 Corsa tyres, you get revised gearbox settings you get a revised differential 0 to 62 has come down from 4.1 to 3.9 seconds
You also get these lovely sports seats. Now in Europe, they get the bucket seats, which I'm not gonna lie, they are nicer. And it's a shame that you can't auction them in the UK. And you also finally get the RS sports exhaust system, which certainly wakes up the RS4, but it's still not the most raucous of these sixes. <laughs> There's nothing on Alpha's V6 in the Julia Quadrifoglio, but it does give a little bark at the gear changes. This is what the RS4 should have been from the start in 2016, though, with that B9 generation when it arrived. This is what that car should have been. And unfortunately, the standard car is a little bit dull to drive. It's perfectly capable, it's very fast, but it's a bit dull, and this does fix that. There is a kicker though. Only 75 of these are coming to the UK, and all of which are sold. But it looks like your only option is, if you do want an RS4 and not an RS6 or a, another faster state, is to get yourself a regular RS4, get yourself some coilovers, Get yourself some different wheels, get yourself a different exhaust, and suddenly you've got this car, very close to this car, in a regular RS4 trip. I don't think you can argue with that, can you? Yeah, I've got a concentration phase and a smiling phase right now because I am having a fantastic time. This is far better than a regular RS4, wow. Kudos, Audi. See what happens when you let your hair down. You produce some brilliant cars. Ah, why does it have to be a competition spec to be this good? Why can't it just be this good with the regular car? Ah, on a little side note, and a little practicality comment, something we don't often do it. Not only is it absolutely huge in here, but the park assist is particularly useful. It's got a front camera, but that front camera is a really wide angle lens, high definition, and it's a neat little touch. Do I like everything about this car? No. There is something that really frustrates me, and that is the throttle mapping. Now, I'm not sure what goes on in the first sort of inch of travel on the throttle pedal, but it's almost unresponsive, nothing happens. And when you're trying to just overtake someone in traffic, you go to use a little bit of throttle to get you by and realize you, you, need, you need more. So you go to put your foot down a bit further and then all of a sudden you kick down three gears, you're using 90% torque and you're pushed back in your seat and suddenly you're off. Apart from that though, everything in here is a joy to be. I mean, Audis have always been for me one of the nicest cabins to sit. Everything feels like it's designed around you. It's very easy to get what you want. You've got your screen in front here, which you can change and have your sat nav and whatnot, and you're changing your songs, and you've got Apple CarPlay or Android Auto for your connectivity with your smartphone and all the gadgets that you should have on a car, certainly that cost this much. I feel like I can drive this at nine tenths and still have a conversation. It is so easy to drive fast. It gives you a lot of confidence. Yeah, this is a brilliant little thing. Little, big thing. And then when you get to a corner, you stamp on the brakes, pull down the gears, chuck the throttle in, use it all. You've got so much traction. Chuck the nose in, the rear wants to follow. A little bit tighter here. Use a bit more power. Yep, no understeer there. We've got some temperature in the tires now. Fantastic. I've got the traction control halfway off just to allow a little bit of slip just not to kill the power, just so I can have some fun. So let's circle back to our discussion at the start and whether it's better than the M3 Touring now. No, it's not. But the gap between the RS4 and the M3 has shortened drastically. Now, sadly, as I said, this is likely the last dance for the RS4, the B9 generation, and potentially the RS4 model in general. So is it one to go down in the history books? 
time will tell. It's good, it's not brilliant, time will tell. It's certainly better than what we've seen since Audi ditched the V8 back in the late noughties, early sort of 2010s. I like it, I think it's a step up, I still think the M3 is better. Is it a worthy send-off for the B9 generation? Yes, without a shadow of a doubt.